so I, by this time I'd graduated on from the BBC Master. So like I think I was seventeen. So it was like last or penultimate year of of uh, high school that I got an Archimedes, mm. which was made by Acorn, who were the same company that made the BBC Micro. It was a natural progression from that. But they had decided to jump this eight bit era all the way to thirty two bit and forget this sixteen bit era. So like all my contemporaries. So I hung on to the Beeb three years past its best before date. Right, it was way overdue. Everyone else was already on their Ataris and their Amigas and learning about Blitter chips and things that were really cool and interesting. But I was like, no, I can do this on my 8-bit machine. It's fine. <laughs> and then eventually when I gave in, I thought, well, I'm going to go with Acorn still. And by this point, Acorn had designed their own 32-bit microprocessor. Mm-hmm. And this microprocessor uh, was inspired heavily by the 6502 that they'd cut their teeth on. The team had knew all about it. They went out to uh, Western Digital, or whoever uh, d- d- was the designer at the time of the 6502, and said, can you tell us about how you make a chip? And it, it turns out it's like three people, in uh, by this point, three people in like a bungalow in Texas going like, sure, this is how we made it. And like, what? <laughs> you, right. This is, so it's possible for like mortal humans, like a small number of them, to design a chip. And they're like, yeah, of course it is. I, I, I think, you know, the original 6502, Bill Mensch and all that kind of stuff was, you know, bearded men again unfortunately as, as is the way in our industry at the moment although we're trying to change that right um right. with sharpies on a big acetate sheet drawing out the 6502 but it was you know the the, the later versions of it were done uh, similarly and so anyway the folks from acorn came away and said well we can do this too how hard can it be nobody told them how hard it was to make a chip so they you know <laughs> they were like we can do this and they right. designed this really beautiful 32-bit machine and they'd learned from the 6502 where it's like this almost nice separation of addressing modes and flag setting and all this thing and they thought well if i've got 32-bit fixed size opcos i can fit them in nice places and so it's really kind of a nicely designed system and that they called it the acorn risk machine because it was very much a load store architecture with 15 registers or 16 if you include the program counter and of course we all know i'm doing the whole long reveal for you here as you're right. smiling if you know what i'm talking about here as more almost all of your listeners but this was the arm chip the very first arm chip and so the very first 32-bit machine i ever got my hands on was an arm and just like the acorn before it uh, sorry the bbc before it straight into assembly because it was the same basic you could open squiggly braces and start typing uh, uh, six, uh, uh, 65 two arm assembly and it was you know it was beautiful it was so uh simplistic uh it was super fast for the the clock speed i think mine was like an 8 megahertz or 12 megahertz and mm. you know and so and the multiple load and store instructions that it had which was a lovely lovely way of like reading and writing multiple registers from like a, a ascending or descending memory location which was perfect for pushing and popping going in and out of functions but also it was amazing because you could point it at the screen and blitz sprites as fast as you could so although it didn't <laughs> have sprite hardware to write games you could do pretty well with these with clever use of these multiple load and store instructions you know read from here put the over here um and so i had learned arm assembly and i'd thrown everything out the wall and so i was writing everything still in arm assembly so i got to university that's where we were with before we started this i discovered the internet and the internet was amazing and uh, one of the first things I did was write an internet relay cl- uh, chat client for my Acorn because they were still niche even in the UK. You know, nobody had them. Right. Um, and so if you wanted to join an IRC, you either went to the, the, the lab and you used IRC, or, like the command line client in Unix, or if you had as a client on your, your, your local machine and you had like a serial cable to connect to the network, then you could, you know, actually uh, do it from a GUI. Uh, I decided to write my own, and because I only knew assembly, I wrote the whole thing in ARM assembly. And it's, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of lines. It's on GitHub if you want to go and laugh at it all. But it was We'll, uh, a full... we'll link in the show notes for sure. Yeah, well, you... <laughs> <laughs> if people want to torture themselves. But yeah. <laughs> it was a fascinating experience of, of learning. So while I was supposedly doing my physics degree, I was writing this IRC client. Um, the IRC client ended up because all IRC clients at the time had like scripting languages built in them. So you could like do auto greeters and things like that. I ended up writing a scripting language in it, which looks remarkably like BBC basic, except it was object orientated. And then I was doing managed memory. And so I invented this way of cleaning up the memory after you'd finished with it without having to free it manually, which I later discovered is Mark sweep garbage collection. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, Oh, right. And at some point along this path, it should have dawned on me that I could should ask my roommates who were like doing a, actual computer science degree what the heck it was i was really building 
Um, but towards the end of this, it became obvious that it was absurd to be writing large GUI applications in pure assembly. Mm-hmm. And so begrudgingly, and, and because I wanted to have my programs run on um, the computers at the university lab, I learned C. 